All right, we got 336 grams of some drill bits. Holy cow, dude, not gonna believe this. We freaking did it. We freaking did it guys. We just melted half a kilogram almost of drill bits. What's up fellas? We are looking at a thermal cracking hydrogen combustor. After yesterday's test, I had a hunch this thing could melt drill bits no problem. Let's check it out. Okay. So as I mentioned towards the end of the video, or it might have been in the beginning, um, this thing isn't going to do well on gaseous propane. So we have added a liquid propane vaporizer coil. We ought to get all the power we need out of this thing now. We're also going to be running a larger air compressor. Some people mentioned air preheat. And there's two reasons why I didn't bother putting an air preheat on this. First off, I have burners that do that. And the nozzle area is about 350 degrees as a result. In this particular case, we have a very high temperature on the order of a thousand degree jet of hydrogen gas going into this nozzle. Most definitely preheating this air. Um, I don't want to melt the brass penstock that's in here. So having seen preheat only give about 50 degrees extra of temperature in the past, I didn't think it merited it right now, and I don't want to botch the hydrogen test. I want to see what it does without preheat, if anything. Although we are still getting significant air preheat from the hot hydrogen line. We're going to be running this thing on a furnace today. And our goal is to melt some drill bits. If we can melt some drill bits, we've achieved the temperature that's beyond the reach of your typical air aspirated combustors. Normally to melt drill bits, we would need this bad boy right here. This is called the rocket burner. It does have the air preheat line. This thing gets red hot and it results in this thing ending up about 350 some degrees, something like that. So air doesn't have a very large specific heat so a lot of that heat is lost by just the metal and all that but anyway typically to melt drill bits we would have to inject oxygen into these two oxygen lances i don't know if you can see those or not we've got some protective coating on that and this burner right here can produce ingots of high speed steel this is high speed steel and some stainless steel in there too. A little bit of stainless mix. I'm just kind of testing it out. That might be the stainless right there. So that's the goal today. And it costs, I think it was like $14 or something. I'll have to get into that. I actually did them at $12. I believe it cost $12 to melt the drill bits down um, with that burner. And we were at probably 180 kilowatts. Of power so if we can get this burner to do it without oxygen that would be phenomenal all right we got 336 grams of some drill bits that I've cut in half which are still hot so if we can melt these without oxygen we're really doing something I'm going to put this crucible lid on top of it also, and I was even considering scrounging up some charcoal to put down on top of that. All right, I don't know if I'm going to regret this or not, but I put some wood chips in here. They're going to turn into charcoal eventually, but that's to burn up any oxygen that gets in here and all that stuff. And any steam that gets in here, the charcoal will react with the steam and make carbon monoxide, which actually burns hotter than propane also okay so this is it i don't know if this is going to work or not we need about 180 kilowatts to pull this off and as i said it's difficult to get over 90 out of a tank but we're going to do this with liquid all 
All right, I'm just gonna let it run like that for a second till it normalizes. It's very temperamental with that big coil on there. Okay, we're gonna try it like this. Holy cow, dude, you're not going to believe this, we freaking did it. We freaking did it guys, we just melted half a kilogram almost of drill bits. Oh, that is so hot. I can't believe we freaking did it, I got to get this stuff off of here before it melts on there. All right, fellas, so we might have overdid it there on time, but we absolutely melted the drill bits. Um, I was having some trouble getting a thermal couple reading. We had a lot of problems getting this thing dialed in. A lot of problems. We need to move that valve. Trigger, every time I set the emiss emissivity to the proper setting, it was maxing out the gun, indicating that we hit 3,000 degrees. And, dude, this stuff was melted so fluid. You can still see a piece, couple pieces of charcoal floating on top of it. I should have got a shot of that. Dang it. I didn't think to do it. The bottom of my furnace is completely molten. Freaking molten furnace in there, guys. That's burning up my phone. Okay, so we freaking did it. This right here is a piece we glued back together with our refractory glue. I use this as a crucible lid to protect the metal from the atmosphere. Pretty solid piece. Worked out great as a crucible lid. All right. So we essentially just made history. You can see a piece of the charcoal on top there still. Uh. It's a little burnt. Probably too hot to touch. The concept was a success. The test was a little rough. This right here is the 336 grams. We got 334 grams of drill bit back. We had 336. You could tell it's... Um, High melting point metal because of the round corners. Doesn't cast very sharply, the peaks dull. I did this one here a few years back, but I had to use oxygen. This is stainless steel and a bunch of drill bits. You can see a splatter of the stainless steel right there. So I've done a lot of crucible melts in my time, and I've never been able to get drill bits to melt. Sometimes not even cast iron let alone drill bits. This is a piece of refractory concrete that I glued back together. I use this as a crucible lid. This thing was glowing white hot. Feels like that's got a little bit of a break right there. But the glue glued it back together. 
and it seemed to do pretty well. When I opened the furnace and looked down in the crucible, there was still a couple of little pieces of charcoal floating on top of the liquid metal. And liquid steel is kind of weird to look at because it's white. Like cast irons and stuff like that, they have like a, a yellow glow to it. This stuff was glowing white hot. I wish I would have grabbed the camera and took a look at it, but I didn't want it to solidify in the crucible. I, I had little time. You can see here, we did not quite melt the crucible, but we were starting to. This thing was loud. So the next move is, I'm gonna get this thing in the lab book, all that good stuff. And then we're going to do some dissecting. There are some problems with it. It needs some modifications. It worked, but it took me 50 minutes, and that's just not acceptable. 50 minutes is way too long. It, it took me 45 minutes to get the thing set right where I wanted it. I um, was struggling with having the valve on this end of the expander, or the vaporizer, I should say. We want the valve to be downstream from the vaporizer. 